bus operator attending Warren County Technical School where he is a where he is a senior in the electronics program. One of his previous achievements was replacing the school's old mechanical bell system with a new system based on a Raspberry Pi connected to the school's intercom. After high school, Evan plans to pursue a degree in computer science, and he comes from a wonderful group of uh, friends in New Jersey who for the last few years have also contributed wonderful young speakers for us. Hey, Evan. All right, thank you. Hi there. <laughs> uh, hey there, I'm Evan Merck, it's KD2IZW. And as Carol said, I'm going to be presenting a tethered balloon-based repeater for emergency applications. So uh, I'm a general class, I'm a general class operator uh, from Hackenstown, New Jersey, which is in the uh, northwest part of New Jersey. Oh, certainly, yes. Um, as I said, I am a senior in the electronics program at Warren County Technical School, and in the fall, I'm going to be attending the uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology for their computer science program. Um, so let's take a second to talk about the, uh, oh, about the problem. Got to get there first. Um, the rest of the problem, um, in search and rescue missions, um, conditions for radio aren't always necessarily ideal. Um, factors like the weather or the terrain, and don't even get me started about the leaves, commonly cause problems. And this isn't exactly great. So what if there is a way that we could improve this situation? Um, the solution that we propose is a balloon-based repeater, um, a consistent solution for an inconsistent problem. It was originally meant to be a drone-based solution, but drones don't fly for long enough. Um, it uses a helium-filled weather balloon instead, which is tethered to the ground and sent far into the air. Um, of course, when you're building a repeater that small, there are some very important specifications to take into account, especially when you're going to be putting it into the air. Um, it has to be easily assembled and reproduced so that multiple teams can build these things. Um, it has to be inexpensive for the same reasons. It has to be low maintenance because you can't be wasting your time on that. And it has to be lightweight to get in the air and versatile and most of all, reliable. It can't fail. And when you're trying to make a small repeater, the first thing that you want to have are small radios. And that's where these 818 modules come very much in handy. They're super small, super inexpensive, very lightweight, and they're great for embedded applications like these. They're full-fledged radios, um, you know, whether on two meter or the UHF bands, they work pretty well. Um, so we bought some of these that we can test to see if they would work for this project. Um, over there, you can see, um, I first put them onto a breadboard, just wired up a single radio to see if we could get communications. And we could, and it seemed to work pretty all right. So um, we had these small little daughter boards here, breakout boards even, um, that we used to put it onto a breadboard, so that way we can make a full-fledged repeater out of the thing. So that repeater, it had no logic to it. Um, simply audio that goes in is what comes out. There is no IDing or anything, but it was a proof of concept to make sure that we were going in the right direction. And after hooking it up to a battery and some antennas, it seemed to work quite well, so we progressed forward. Oh, there we go. So we ended up buying some higher quality boards to continue on. Um, these ones had SMA connectors for the antennas already in place. Um, and at the very bottom, you can see us sort of starting to put it all together. Um, there's a power distribution board there that makes sure that everything's at the right voltage levels. Um, the two radio modules, of course, for your communications. A mixer board for dealing with audio mixing. Thank you. And then um, an Arduino DUE, which does all of the logic parts of the repeater. And we'll delve into that right now. So how the whole thing works, there are the two radio modules right there. The uh, A18V, which is a two meter receive module, and 818U, which is a UHF transmit module. Um, audio from the receive goes through the audio mixer, as well as audio mixed in from the Arduino that has your CWID, um, all of the different noises that need to be made, courtesy tones, and then that's all pumped over to the transmit module. Um, it's powered by a 7.4 volt 5 amp hour battery, but you can go with whatever suits your needs. 
And then there's a power distribution board to make sure that each part gets the proper voltages to it. Um, being that it's running an Arduino, um, we had to write software for it. Um, that software runs all of the logic from keying the transmitter at the right times to running the ID timers and all of that that's involved in the repeater. It's written in C and it's designed to be as versatile as possible so that way any team that picks it up can modify it to suit their needs. Um, all of the software is also open source and available on github.com so you can check it out there. Um, open source is great, it allows for fresh ideas to come into play and for more innovation in the space, especially in a hobbyist you know, a place like ham radio. And so here are some of the final products. One second. So this is it. Um, it's pretty darn small, all things considered. Battery here, two antennas. The antennas are a good bit larger than the box itself, even. Once we got all of the parts in and we got it mounted to a 3D printed chassis over there, um, we wired everything up, you know, putting all the modules connecting together, lots of testing went, you know, lots of testing that isn't seen here that went into it. And finally, we had a working repeater. Um, so there was only one step left, which was putting it in the air. And that's what we did. Um, we tested the repeater, we brought it about, we secured the repeater to the balloon after inflating it, um, tethered that whole setup to the ground about 50 feet, so that way we can test to make sure this all worked out. And we think it worked quite well. So I'm going to go to a video real fast just to show sort of how the whole thing works. So that right there was the balloon in action. That was during our test flight, just you know, our making sure the whole thing ended up working in the air. And it did so quite well, I think. So let's just uh, get rid of that. That gonna go away? No, apparently not. Right. Um, so just some final notes. Um, you know, obviously this whole thing was about this balloon-based repeater. Um, we found the balloon could probably stay inflated for about five days if you needed. Um, the whole thing costs less than $150 to build, which I think is a, is a big part of it. The balloon only cost about 21 of those dollars. Um, through our testing, we found that you can get about a one mile radius at about 100 feet in the air, though your mileage may vary. And you should expect about 10 to 20 hours of talk time on this, depending on your activity, of course. Um, there's a short delay between flights of this balloon as you're taking it down and replacing batteries, but it's mostly negligible. And we think that it worked quite well for what it was designed to do. And we hope that we can continue on it to make it even better. Um, so some people that I'd like to thank, first and foremost, Mr. Roshesk, who's sitting in the audience over here. Um, thank you very much for all of the help with all of this and mentoring me through this whole process. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do this without your guidance, and I really appreciate it. Um, to my teacher, Mr. Maturki, who couldn't make it here. Um, thank you for you know, giving me time in class to work on all of this, as well as all the help with the mechanical parts that are far beyond me. So thank you guys. Um, additionally, I'd like to thank all of these people. Douglas, Tucker, and Abby are actually back there. Um, Abby, get your license already, please. Um, Sam and Dan for working on... Oops, sorry. 
Sam and Dan for working on um, 3D printing a lot of these components. They're great at modeling, it's great. Um, and then thank you to the entirety of the uh, 721st Mechanized Contest Battalion, they're all back there, for helping me through this whole presentation and project. Your help, I can't begin to thank you enough. As well as all of the electronics classes at Warren Tech for being patient with me over the last few weeks. And uh, one more thing. Uh, Carol, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present. I really appreciate it, and congratulations on 30 years. You're the best.